If you've hit your 30s and you feel like your life is boring and you kind of feel like your life is over, uh, this episode's for you. We're going to talk about how childlike curiosity is going to help you spark those things to be high achieving in your 30s and to make sure that you are setting the right goal. So continue to watch. Welcome back to the Chasing a Greater Vision podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Jasper. Today, we're talking about how childlike curiosity can really help you with setting and achieving meaningful goals in your 30s. Now, this is important because I feel like once we hit our 30s, sometimes we're like, well, life is over or life is settled in or it's boring and we just don't feel that same childlike you know, feeling that comes up in excitement for life. So um, I'm going to give you four things on really how to do that. And so Again, like we do, we high level it within the first minute. Number one, you have to find your inner child. Number two, go fail at something. Number three, ask questions. And then number four, observe how you feel in different settings and be honest with yourself. Now, you know, sometimes we become too adult. Now I put too adult in quotations on my notes. Uh, and what I mean by that is there's no play. Everything has an, an objective tied to it and everything is tied to a responsibility. And what happens is everything is a, oh, I have to do this, not I want to do this or I get to do this. It's I have to do this thing. And what I've noticed for me in my life is everyone who was ahead of me, like in a phase of life, like when I was in high school, was like, oh, wait till you get to college. You won't be able to do X, Y, Y, Z. Then when I was in college, there were people who were, you know, who just started a job. Well, wait till you get a nine to five. Then X, Y, Z is not going to be there. You won't be able to do this or wait till you get in a relationship or wait till you, you know, you know, get married, all of these things. And, and every time it just, the conversation felt like, well, once you be get to a next level of adulthood, then part of you is going to die off. And in my mind, I was like, well, this doesn't seem like a fun way to live. And I don't subscribe to that notion because I have really good examples of people who are in those other phase of life, you know, with kids and like my parents and stuff like that, who were just like, you don't have to just let a bunch of things go, you know, kind of the childlike loves that you've had because you've, you're older and you're in different phases of life. Like that's, how you get a lot of the the curiosity that's how you actually achieve uh higher is by like keeping those qualities and and, and staying true to those qualities so i'm going to talk about uh, a few areas on really how to get back to that why you should get back to that because when you're in your 30s what you don't want to do is you don't want to sit back and say well life is boring now because why because things are just going to get more higher stakes as you get to the next you know phase of life they're going you're going to have a lot more responsibility so in our tips and tricks how we can really dive deep into getting that childlike curiosity, getting that thing that makes us feel like the butterflies are there, like we're excited to do something, even with our nine to fives and our relationships and all the other responsibilities that we have. Number one, find your inner child. So when I'm a 90s kid, so in the, in the 90s, MJ was killing it for the Bulls, and I realized just like every other kid, I want to be Michael Jordan. Now, that's why I went on to play basketball. That's why, you know, it, that was my life all the way through college. It was basketball. But what I realized was over time, it wasn't just, oh, I wanted to be MJ because of the basketball standpoint, because you get to a certain age, you're like, I'm not going to be Michael Jordan, right? But I realized was he was able to have a level of influence on other people. I saw everybody else wanting to be him. I saw everybody else work harder in a specific thing, um, which was basketball or something or take a mindset that he had. And they were like, oh, this is the MJ mindset. This is how I'm going about my day. And I realized, oh, that's, that's the piece that I want in my life. That's the piece. That's the childlike piece that has to be there. I have to be someone or do something that whether I'm doing something, I'm inspiring someone or whether I'm speaking, I'm inspiring someone and I'm inspiring someone to get into some sort of game time mode so that they can be a better person. And by that, I also have to live that I have to embody that there was something about Michael Jordan where it was like every day when he went in to do his thing, he was doing the thing. And then when he was on the court, he was doing the thing and he was talking the thing to everybody that he was playing. Right. And I realized like that's something that I have to do. I can't just be you know, in front of camera, just talking and telling you all, Hey, all this nice stuff, but then not, not outside, you know, really outside of this doing it, not working hard, you know, in my career, not working hard on the podcast, not working hard on my fitness, not working hard on my relationship. Those are things and not working hard on my faith. These are things that I really have to do and I have to embody and in doing so hopefully and in, in inspire. That's the inner child for me that I was like, if that is there, I'm able to just live a more fulfilled life. The other thing is I have a note here. What I've noticed is high achievers who are fulfilled, not just high achievers who have the nice car, who they think, oh, because I can get all the women because of the money or whatever. I don't even necessarily consider that 
high achieving. I think it's just like you, you got a lot of money and you did stuff, right? But I say high achievers who will fulfill, who are fulfilled. This might not even be monetary. You might have somebody who does a, what society sees as a menial job, but they're high achievers because they high achieve to their potential of what they want in life. Those who are fulfilled have the ability to tap into something every single day that taps into their inner child, that taps into that inner like curiosity. I see it in my dad. I think it's the coolest thing. I see it in my dad. He gets so excited to talk about things that he reads. He gets so excited to talk about the new things that he's writing. He gets so excited to just, you know, impart wisdom into other people. And it's like, you see the light there and it's like, oh, but I also see so many people who are that age down to their thirties, down even beyond their thirties who sit back and you have a conversation with them and you would think their life is over. And it's like, they have what you think is everything. But what happens is they're not doing anything that taps into anything that is, that excites them. So tap into your inner child. Number two is go fail at something. I have a list of like all the things that I failed and, and some have been successes at, but left lane project, my old blog, like back from like 2012, 2013, 413 health and fitness, uh, which was an online personal training company that I started that transitioned into 413 apparel, uh, that we ran for about five years. Uh, if you don't know, uh, I was on the bachelorette for a season, got bumped episode two. Right. Um, and then I was sponsored by bodybuilding.com, uh, for a few years. Now, not all of these were failures. The reason the reason I bring them up is because I tried something that was outside of my tech background and I did it because there were areas that I just wanted to figure out. Uh, the bachelorette story is one that I probably don't talk about a lot. So I actually didn't care to go on the show a year prior to me going on the show. I was approached by a lady in a gym in San Diego and she was like, Hey, do you want to be on the bachelorette? And I was like, Oh, I'm not really right. And so she was like, okay, well like you have to look for it and you know, would love to just at least take a picture, get your contact information. I was like, okay, that's fine. So then she reached out like a week later and she's like, Hey, you know, auditions for this thing are next week. Do you want to come out for it? I was like, no, I'm okay. I'm all good. Next year came around and you know, a tech project that I was on was ending and I was like, okay, I kind of have that time. Like, maybe, and they reached out to me again and I was like, ah, maybe, but I didn't really want to. I called my dad and I said, Hey, there's this opportunity. I don't know. Do you think I should do it? My dad was actually the one who was like, yeah, I mean, why not? He was like a percentage of percentage of people get an opportunity to try something that's just different. That has a completely different experience and completely outside of the norm. Why wouldn't you just try it. it. It doesn't matter what happens at the time. He's like, he's like, you're 27. He's like, you can bounce back from anything. It's going to allow you to network with other people. You're going to see a different, you know, a different texture of life and what's out there. He's like, why would you not? And I thought that it was a really cool thing because I was able to see, I was like, oh, well, you know, seeing the trajectory of like my parents' life, like my brother was born in Germany and my parents were in Germany in their early thirties with no cell phones and all this stuff. Like we also lived in Singapore for some years and, you know, traveled around, you know, the world and in different places and stuff. And, and what I realized was the push to just do something outside of a nine to five was something that really, really helped me and my curiosity because it did two things. It helped me not be scared to do something. And the other thing too, is it made me realize that there is more to life outside of the nine to five bounds. And I say that not, you know, you know, trying to stomp all over a nine to five. No, I think that that's great. And I think it's necessary. And I think that it adds structure and adds value. And you're able to provide a lot of value to whatever organization that you're working in or whatever that you're doing. But there's also life outside of it. And I think sometimes we forget that. And when we forget that, we we forget that we have childlike things that we want to do. Why as a child did we want to do these things? Because we didn't have something that took up a bulk of our day. So we're like, we can do this. We can dream this. We can. We have all the time in the world. Now when we have a lot of structure, it's like, well, we don't have time to do things. Now, I, I, I couldn't make that, you know, move to go re do a reality TV show like that now, obviously one, because I'm, you know, uh, in a relationship and then two, because there's other things that I just enjoy doing so much, but I'm not afraid to fail at something like right now, the things that I'm doing, I'm running more, I'm learning more about that. Right. Uh, I'm smoking meats. I, you know, I'm trying, I'm failing a bunch of different recipes, a bunch of different things. Uh, I'm doing this podcast. I'm doing speaking more. I'm learning. I'm, I'm doing things outside of, you know, my structured day to day that allow me to fail and to learn. And it allows me to spark that childlike curiosity and that, that childlike thing that makes me say, man, I'm gonna do something. And it's also hopefully going to inspire other people to do something because I'm not doing this on the quote unquote nine to five clock, but I'm able to high achieve outside of it by doing something and, and failing at it. 
and then hopefully obviously progressing at it, which I hope that I'm doing, but that's where it starts. And last note is don't just be proficient at what you're good at. Be proficient at what's meaningful to you or get proficient at what's meaningful to you. So I'll move on. Number three, ask questions. Now, I love to research why different podcasts are, why they pop. I love to see the tone of voice. I love to see the storytelling. I love to see the structure of different podcasts. Same thing with speakers. I ask questions as kids, as children, they ask questions, they're curious because they want to know. When we lose that curiosity, when we lose those those questioning, then all of a sudden we kind of become insular. We don't ask the reasons why. We don't ask people how they're doing. We don't ask you know deeper questions. So we actually don't get a lot of real knowledge. We get surface level knowledge, but we don't get depth. And what happens is when you see the people who are the highest achieving people and people who are in their 30s who I, I see making really good strides is they get deeper. They don't just stay high level. So ask questions to get deeper. And it might be deeper in something that you're interested in. It might be deeper in, in, in asking questions about someone you're interested in, you know, to gain some more knowledge. It might be deeper within your nine to five, whatever it is, get deeper. That's what kids do. They, they want to know why, why, why. And they get to the point where you're just so frustrated to answer the question. You're like, there's no more, but they get down to the bottom of it until they're satisfied with, with the curiosity that they had that's fulfilled them. We as adults are very curious about things oftentimes, but we don't get deep. What we do is just keep it surface level. And then we just create theories about stuff. Get deep. Number four, and last is observe how you feel in different settings and be honest with yourself. For me, there was a, a few different things that I had to realize that I had to, to assess where I felt and, and how I felt about things, right? First thing, I'll just use this podcasting. Being in front of camera, like right now, if you see this, like we're, we're averaging on YouTube, like podcast views from like 10 to like 100 views, right? Not a crazy amount of views. I don't care because I feel like this is what I'm put on earth to do. I'm put on earth to speak. I'm put on earth to hopefully inspire. And this is, this is just what it is. It is what it is. And, and a feeling that I get is when I'm speaking, it, I feel like I'm supposed to be here. So it doesn't matter, you know, the outcome or whatever. This is the feeling that I get. Find something where when you feel a little bit of a spark, you know, really be honest with it, assess it. Same thing when it came to like commitment and being in a committed relationship with Carly and I, as things went on, I start to see the value of it. I was like, Ooh, this feels different. This feels very nice. And I had to realize like, don't ignore this feeling, dig deeper. Why does it feel like this? Okay. Then also commit myself more to it, P give more to it, do more of the right things. And I realized, wow, this is, this is a really, really good thing, right? The conversations that I have, I like deep conversations, you know, being in front of people, talking in front of people. I like those things. Those things make me feel really good. Make me feel really alive doing some sort of fitness or athletic feat or something that makes me feel very alive. And, and I'm and not to say that I'm always great at it, but I'm curious with it. And it makes me realize, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be because I get a feeling there. That's unlike a feeling other areas. Like you could put a piano in front of me right now. I used to play piano and saxophone. I liked playing them, but it wasn't like, I'm not playing them now. So it's not like that, that feeling really was there and that it stuck with me. I say all of that to say, try new things and see how you feel when you do them. Some things won't stick. We, we did a, uh, a couple's trip where we, um, this was like a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. And you know, we did archery and it was really, really cool, but I didn't have a feeling that I was like, oh, I need to take this up as a hobby, but we tried something that was new, that was different. And that's what life is supposed to be about. Try something new. That's completely different. That's completely new to you. And this is going to be a very different kind of like rule set type thing. Um, at church, uh, one of our pastors, he had a really good dating, you know, advice for married couples. And he was like, you know, every two weeks, take your spouse out on a date every two months, do some sort of, you know, staycation vacation. It can be most, mostly a staycation, but just get out for, for a weekend. And then every two years do a trip outside of the country if you can afford it. And so with this, if I flip that, it's like, however your cadence is every two weeks, try something new every two months, try something that's like, whoa, this is completely different than what I'd ever do. And maybe every two years, try just a different venture, or if you have a venture, continue to progress in it. So to wrap this all up, make sure that you are just 
really diving into your childlike qualities. Number one, find your inner child. Find the thing that that really made you tick as a kid. Number two, go fail at something. You, we're not too old to fail. We should be failing every year because we should be able to look back on our year and say, wow, we failed at X, Y, Z, but we're also better at X, at A, B, C because of it. Number three, ask questions. Be more curious. Get deeper. And number four, observe how you feel in different settings and be honest. And how you have to do that is you have to put yourself in different settings first. So get outside of your comfort zone. Look, I hope that this episode helped you out. I love talking about it. We are still going to continue to do this together. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, comment, share, send it to somebody else, and we will see you next time. Peace. Thank you so much for watching this video. We have clips and content coming out every single week, full videos on Thursdays and clips coming out almost every single day. You can subscribe to this channel if you like it. Also, please send it to somebody who you know needs this message or any message that you see, and we will see you in the next video.